everybody and we're starting to try a live and what I'm doing on my other uh, channel is I'm going to see if it pops up so I'm just going to say hello hello I'm going to send out that oh yes you see suddenly working I mean Hannah what can we say about it what can we say about this system about this madness of what is Facebook Yesterday my face was distorted, today I just couldn't get on with you, I don't know if it's a phone, there are many phones that I drop, if you look on the, on this little mirror now in which I put all my phones with those sticky back things, there's three phones, there's Darling Hannah to remind us of questions I've forgotten, there's another phone which I use which doesn't have a phone but it has Wi-Fi, um, which is one we're on successfully and then there's my normal phone. I'm a phone girl. Good morning, Rebecca, and good morning, Joe, and good morning, Lisa, good morning, Abdul, good morning, Rosie, good morning, Trudy, good morning, Rebecca. Um, I hope you, um, the majority of you, benefited from our lovely one-day sale yesterday. It was great fun on Trendy London, and um, we do them very rarely, and if you missed out, don't worry. Things are still worth getting at full price, I have to say. Um, and uh, and it, it, But it was just lovely for us to see the love. It was an incredible sale, and and I think there were quite a few people who thought, oh, let me save up, let me save up. And it, it was just, it, it gave them enough to, and then there were about three people of the 10,000 left comments saying, 10% isn't very much. And then um, all the other lovely ladies said, well, actually, for Trinity London, it's a lot. And it's more just to introduce you to the experience. So it was fantastic. Now, Zara Shop Up, you all asked me about. I've got a, a, some big announcement, I'll tell you. Um, Zara Shop Up, you all asked me about, and I might go Hannah are you based in London yeah you are so I might get Hannah to film me and go around Hannah I have to yeah I can do that oh uh, well I'll commit we'll plan that in I have to say I'm really sorry I'm eating but I just wake up and I'm very hungry I haven't found that many good things at Zara I've got like on my rail I have three things I like from Zara um so Oh my God, Mary is saying it snowed in my hometown the first time since 1986. I can't believe that, Mary. Where do you live? Um, Bridget, no. Suzanne, took a while to love BFF, but I, excuse me, I can't live without her. Buggy, thanks so much that you donated so much to the Caroline's Initiative. It was, it was a, I just want to mention again that um, you can go online to beautybacked.com. And it's a charity. And yeah, I only found out about it because of Caroline, because she listed some brands saying, can you help? And I looked at that. And very oddly, well, not very oddly at all, but over the weekend, I'd been just reading the stuff back and forth about Boris Johnson with um, people in the um, um, beauty industry. And I have um, quite a few women who work in the beauty industry. And it is just... Like all of us who have friends in the industry, the suffering, it's suffering. Most of those people I know are the main breadwinners for their families. And so when they're having a tough time and they can't open and everything is falling apart and they're losing their home and they're losing their livelihood and as a consequence, they're losing their quality of life, which has an effect on everything around them. When Caroline mentioned about this charity, I then needed, I called her and I said, I need to understand exactly where the money goes because I've done things before and I've just thought, mm, there's money gone to the right place. So, um, she then explained exactly how the charity works. Um, so, if you feel that you have, you know, I've had over the years so many women who have looked after me to make me feel better, you know, on that superficial, lovely level. They've done my nails, they've threaded my face, they've you know, done tons of stuff. I think doctors, I know doctors are allowed to do treatments with masks um, because I had a treatment last week, which I'm going to share with you, quite an extreme treatment. But I know that all those smaller things which don't charge huge amounts of money are actually the ones suffering the most. So, beautybacked.com, go and have a look. If you can make a donation, I looked yesterday, there were donations of three pounds, five pounds, 10 pounds, whatever there were. There were all different amounts or sign a petition, you can do either. So I'd really love it if you could. Um, and uh, she's very good, she's a very good champion, Caroline. She, you know, gets on things and she's a champion of it. So if you wanna know the latest thing that you need to be thinking about in terms of something in that stratosphere, there's no one better. Um, just to get people on the case um, or bring things to people's attention like she did to me. Shawford in Surrey, I love 
I love you, thank you. A question, why don't you put your face mask right up to your hairline? Probably because it's a little sticky mask and my skin is absolutely fine there. It's fine. Um, and I just don't, when I take it off, I'll put the towel on it and I just, you know, I just like to leave a little bit of space. That's why. Um, Rachel, uh, thank you for the show yesterday. Added to my ever-growing Trini London collection. I, I love it when that happens to people. Um, because the thing is, also, you know, we have this kind of match to me and everything should should be in your match to me. But I step out occasionally in my match to me because I use a colour that really suits me over or under a colour that slightly suits me. So I am even naughty of that. But what? What I love the most is, you know, when we were all little girls or little boys and we just sit in front of our mum's mirror and play, you know, and I did that. There wasn't much to play with on the counter because my mother had the number seven coral lipstick. And then she had, that's it. Maybe she had a scar, but literally that's it. My sister on the other hand had lots of stuff and I would always be stealing her things and trying to play with them. We'd always be like, hey, what did you do with my bronzer? Um, and, um, but I love that. I, I remember a memory really strongly. I was staying in a house. I got on a French exchange in Fréjus, and which is in Provence. And I was staying with this incredibly elegant family and I felt very, very lonely because they all, I was there to speak French and they were really quite sophisticated and I felt very English country cousin. But she'd given me some of her old makeup and I went upstairs, I was in this little attic room and I put up some pictures of Vogue magazine on the wall and I tried to copy the makeup of the models. And I remember and this was midst of my spotty, feeling shitty time, that I had this moment of thinking, oh, that's really lovely. You know, just playing and having the fun to play. And in a way, that's what those pots are. They're an opportunity. So even though we have to go out and we have to wear masks and we have to adhere to very strict and I think good um, um, medical advice, um, I want to be able to come home and I want to be able to look nice and I want to be able to put something on um, so that I don't just look in... The mirror and think I've given up and that applies to clothing mm. because you know I've done a closet compassion this weekend which is on clothing and I'm uh, sorry on casual clothing and even when I was doing it I, I I've got myself to a place where there's a minimum level of casualness I'll do I'll either do really really casual like this and I always do this when we do skincare Q&A or I'll do a basic trouser but I'll just do the trainer will be a nice trainer and the top will fit me in the right way. And I suppose that's just conditioning. That's years and years of my kind of, you know, pushing all those belief systems I have on me. But I think it does help. I think, you know, if I get up and I feel like I got up this morning, I went to bed at 3.30, I felt a bit there. And I thought, let me put on a face mask because I want to have that buoyancy back in my skin. And when I take that off, let me put on a really nice blusher today so I liven my skin. That's in a way what it's all about. It's about doing it for us more than anyone else. There are secondary people. I remember Charles said to me when I first met him, he said, Trini, this is such a controversial, well, not controversial, but it's a, to me a like shining light. He said, in life, you've got to put yourself first, then your children, and then your partner. And the reason for that is if you're not great in yourself, everyone else will suffer. So if you're giving everything to everyone else, and your tank is empty, the people around you will not get the best of you. That's how I choose to interpret it. It's not in the most selfish form that you could otherwise look at it. But I think that pervades to other things. You know, if you're feeling good and you're taking care of yourself and you're nurturing yourself, it's a, uh, you know, Lila now has finally a skincare routine because she's seen me every single day say, you've got to have a skincare routine, darling. You need to have it. And there are days I can just see her pick her spots again and I will never, ever unzip my mouth. I will never zip up my mouth. I always say, you know, darling, why I had such bad scarring? It's because I did what you're doing now. <coughs> it must be the most infuriating thing she can hear. But I can't stop myself from saying it to her because I know the consequences. And it's very difficult to decide how to tell a teenager something so that they can hear what you're saying. Um, as opposed to just thinking, oh, my God, noise in my ear. Can she go away, please? Did you feel, Hannah, can I ask you, how is your relationship with your mum and skincare? I'm interested to know, because you are how old, darling? Mid-20s? Early 20s? I'm 20, 24. 24. Okay, so did your mum do lots of makeup? Um, yeah. Yeah. 
And did it make you want to do less or more or the same? I think more. More? Really? I love yeah. that. Why? Um, my mum's really, like, glamorous, so that was always my kind of, like, look up when I was a kid, so I always wanted to be glamorous, like how I always wanted to wear high heels and lipstick. Oh, I love that. <laughs> how about you? I'd love to know, ladies, um, now, because you're all different ages. How much were you influenced by your mother? And I'm thinking, who's influenced these routines? And it's probably just me researching and researching and researching and researching and testing and trying and finding and loving or discarding. And it's, that's been the journey. And then I have things like stuff comes onto my desk. So there's certain things that turn up at my house sort of uninvited. And there's certain things that turn up invited. So one of them that's turned up invited, I'm going to start with, because I've done this women founder um, little series on Instagram called Elevator Pitches. And it's when women who have a company um, talk to me about... Um, a company they've got and it just gives them a platform of another a million people to to um, you know tell their company too so I'm going to talk to you very quickly about two of them today because you might miss elevator pitches if you're not on Instagram but the first one is from a lady who um, has fluorescence well this is fluorescence PR but this is barrier cram barrier cram bouclem bouclemé bouclemé because when I was asking her and I said bouclem or bouclemé and she has wavy hair um, this lady, very wavy hair, um, and so she wanted something which would really help her curls. So she did an elevator pitch with me. I don't know if it's out yet, Hannah. Do you know if it's out yet? Boucle? I'm not I sure filmed I'm not it. I know I filmed it. And what I like about them, plant-powered curl care, it's really healthy stuff. Lots of product in each bottle, and it's very, very plant-based. And traditionally, in fact, it's not out yet, but I'll tell you about it because I remember it's all come rushing back to me. But traditionally, when you went to the Afro hair section or very, very curly hair section, you found products which had a tremendous amount of chemicals because to get, you know, there was a, there was a kind of tradition to relax hair or to make hair straighter and not to kind of embrace what your hair is in any hair category. You know, we always want to do something different in our hair. So she just wanted something that would give her curly, curly hair a lovely finish and wouldn't make it crackly and wouldn't be bad for her. So she invented this. So go out and have a look on the website. And I think the website is called Bouclem, B-O-U-C-L-E, um, E hyphen, um, E ampersand M-E, you know. A crack, which one is it when it goes which way? Anyway, you'll, you'll find it. There's Curls Redefined, which is a curling gel. She said you put it on, and you, you dry your hair and then you sort of break that stuff. You know when you do something that's a curl activator, sometimes it gets to feel hard, but then you, you take the comb and you just brush it out. So I love that. And there's shampoo, hydrating hair cleanser, and there's um, a conditioner, and there is a super hot styler. What I like is she calls it hydrating hair cleanser, and that tells me how sulfate-free it is. Because generally, when you think of the word shampoo, it has sulfates. But this um, is just a cleanser. I like her renaming this category. So that's a really lovely brand. So I'm going to tell you one other brand. And then we're going to do, you keep your finger. I still want to know about your mums and daughter relationship. So please tell me. Another brand. And they've been going a while. And I just love this brand. And I'm going to wear these today. You know how obsessed I am with my trainers. But it's called Air and Grace. There they are. Some of you might have these already. They're leather trainers and they, um, what they basically specialize in is they have this kind of inner sole, which they believe is the most comfortable thing you will ever wear in your life. And they have mainly flat shoes. I think they're going to do some heels soon, but you know, we're not talking Birkenstocks or granny shoes. We're talking really fab, n quite narrow, not too wide, a lovely little detail of oh, 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 silver on the back. Um, I'm not going to smell them because my mask will get on it. True to size. I, in fact, went down to a 39. No, I went to a 40 and they fit perfectly. Um, and um, I like their logo. It's unobtrusive and in silver. But it is like walking on butter. Okay, Erin Grace. Such a nice woman. And when she was talking about her company, you could really tell that it was all about waiting to make the shoe that she really felt was needed, not just throwing it all out there. 
Um, so uh, we are all interested in founders who have got an innovative, interesting product that we feel that Instagram and Facebook would love. I think we film most of the elevator pitches because we pre-film them until about November, December, and then we'll take um, applications again. But um, it's lovely to have that forum for women. Okay, so, darlings, um, turn on, don't turn off, don't turn on. Yeah, that's true. And if you missed it, go onto the bloody Stacks page, because on Stacks page, which I endlessly talked about yesterday on Trinity Downton, there's already a discount there and nobody really knows. And I've got, I'm, I was redoing the Stacks page, because there's a lot of tech I'm redoing. Um, I was looking and I was thinking, what are the most common Stacks? Like, you know what I'd love? You know what I'd love to know? Help me out here, please. Can you tell me, if you're a stacker, what's in your stack? Could you do that for me now? I would find that so interesting. What's in your stack? What do you consider a stack? Include the BFF, by the way. And what's in it? Please, spend the time now for me. That's that, because it will really help something I'm doing, which will help, which will do. Angela, I've ordered the Medic 8 peptide. Where do they sit in my AM and PM routine? And should I use them twice a day, please? Oh, uh, well. I brought the peptides up here, I think. Hmm, there. Medicaid, by the way, have a few peptides. I have discovered, consequently, to my doing that post about my eyelashes. They have... I'm really sorry I'm eating. I haven't had breakfast. I'm very hungry. Mm. They have actually... I didn't know this peptide lash serum. Then they have another peptide, which is copper peptides, which has a dual chamber. And then they have this, which is their liquid peptides. Now, this is the one I have been using on my eyelashes, and it's not legal, meaning, you know, you shouldn't be doing it. Uh, it's not saying at the outside, use on your eyelashes. So really understand that's not how it should be used. I don't use it with a brush, which some people suggest I use an old mascara brush. I, I literally just take a tiny bit from the pipette, and then I very carefully with my finger, I just brush it on. And I think what I like about with my finger is I can feel where the, f where the product's going on, whereas if I had a comb, I wouldn't. So I like to get in the room, but my eyes are closed, and then open and put it like that. And then on top, I'll put the castor oil. So that's what I use. I get them on Amazon, and I think it's 52 pounds on Amazon, which is a lot, it is a serum. But I also use the serum after the retinol. So this is my favourite retinol. I won't be buying it again only because I spent a lot of money buying this. They gave me the first one, I bought the second one, and I just thought I have to give it a break because it's £210 or something. So I'm going to go and try now another retinol, but it's been an amazing journey and I've really, really loved it. It's the best retinol on the market to me. It's even better than a prescription one, which obviously is really cheap because tretinoin... Um, or not that Corel, but the other one people buy, um, because it's sort of prescription. It's got nothing buffering it to give a better experience to your skin. Like I never peel with this, but I know it's strong and my skin is in very good condition. So I put that on and then I put the peptide over. That's my routine at the moment. Um, and then I think I'm gonna go on. I think I've got another pept, I've got another um, retinol I'm gonna go on to, which I wanted to try which is, yes, I was trying before, and I think it's a really lovely retinol, the High Dose Retinoid Serum from Sunday Riley. Uh, this is a lot less than that. It's not quite the prices of a um, The Ordinary or something, but it's a complex retinol, and so that's what I'm going to go on to next. And whilst we're on the subject of retinols, if you're thinking, I want to start a retinol journey, a really good retinol journey starter is Indeed Labs Retinol Resurface. It's not too strong, it's just enough, you do not peel, it's Canadian, it's started by um, the company where all the people who work sort of quite closely together out of Canada, including the ordinary guys, um, Brendan and these guys, but um, it's just got good ingredients and I have reviewed it on a few sites, but I think that's a lovely starter's retinol there. Indeed Labs, you, I think, you can buy it in a big boot. Um, so that's my retinol journey. Yeah, are there any others I want to look at? I don't particularly like a retinol oil, like an oily one, because I'm just not good with retinol being an, in an oil formula. I don't know how many of you use retinol like an oil formula. Um, 
So that's the Medicaid one. The face mask I'm using right now, which has been on probably way too long, is VIP Biologic Roche. Roche. They make the P50 here, which is the exfoliating toner that I really love. They're quite expensive. This was probably about 50 quid. I've had it for about a year and a bit, and I use it on special occasions. I'm going to take it off now when my skin just feels it needs a bit of TLC. So, um, and you see, when somebody said, why do I not put it up to the top? Because I need to massage in and get that product off. Ah. And, um, and I don't want to get my hair wet. So just a simple solution. Yeah, I like that. Um, but it just, you know, cream masks might seem so old fashioned, but one of my favorite cream masks that was like my biggest treat, I remember when I was in my 20s and I worked in a, for a, I worked as a summer job. In fact, I was still at school because it was a Saturday summer job. And I worked at Home's Health Place or Home's Health Spa or Home's Health Club or Home Gym on the Fulham Road. And they had Rene Gino and it was like, Sorry, that was so disgusting, but I just need to get the snot out of my nose. <laughs> they had Rene, Rene Gino, and Rene Gino was then, like, so... It is special, but it was so special. And they had this mask, which was Mask Essential Comfort Mask. Let me just see if I still have it. Because um, if I don't still have it, Hannah, could you just make sure I buy it, darling? It's Rene Gino Mask Essential. So if you have a yeah. skin that's been a little bit, you know inflamed you've got some redness in your skin you're feeling like Whoa. um it's got in it camphor and lavender it's just fantastic so that's a beautiful mask but this one you can see my skin is really good and then i'm going to go straight i lost the biologic recharge because i'd gone to um liberties to buy a new one and forgotten i'd left it up here so downstairs in my bathroom um i then rediscovered it it is a acetona, and acetona smell of all different things. This one smells slightly of vinegar kabuchi. Um, and acetonas are, in my routine, they're straight after cleansing because traditionally I would cleanse and I'd granularly exfoliate. I did that a lot, and um, probably I granularly exfoliated on the Richter scale of too much. But I had been told once by a plastic surgeon to really exfoliate granularly around where I had acne scars because he said it would it would push them down it would soften them out and I was so you know I hated my acne scarring so I did that and I think it helped I then did a co2 laser which really helped um and since that point I have probably I will do a granular exfoliation with like Nanette de Gaspé's exfoliator or I quite like the rice brand granular exfoliation indeed labs does a nice one dermalogica you know, these ones that are powdery and, and you put them on and they become something else. But then I will do an acid toner because what an acid toner does is what granular exfoliation does. It takes off some dead skin cells. And this leads me to the main part of, before I get onto a bit of the wardrobe stuff, of um, prepping your skin for moisturiser. One of the most frequently asked questions is, you know, what my skin feels very dry. Can you give me a good moisturiser? And my most one of my most frequent answers is check that perhaps earlier in your routine you're doing something to exfoliate your skin because if you are doing that process of swash, wash, washing off your dead skin cells imagine you know we kind of develop skin cells they activate on our skin they die they sit on our skin and they need to come off and and they don't come off really with water they come off with a little bit more than that so they come off with a granular exfoliation which can leave your skin dry and they come off with uh, acid, which will sort of break through, it sounds very aggressive, but quite gentle, break through them and, um, and clean your skin. And what it will do with anyone who has spots, or anyone going through menopause, or anyone who's feeling their pores are enlarged, I always think it's fantastic for reducing pore size. I've done a lot of um, listings of my favorite ones. On the blog, I've done my Secret 7 um, liquid exfoliants and on Instagram and Facebook I've done my fab four liquid exfoliants there's ones for every size pocket but I think every single person however short your routine oh. is you clean your skin you do some kind of acid you if you want to do a serum if you have to moisturize definitely SPF four things can I count is that four things I think so 
So, um, so I've done two of my morning routine now. And um, the other thing is, you always ask me about the layering of products. And if you layer products the wrong way, you get what I call pilling, which is when you go like that and you suddenly like you've got little crumbs on your face. And that's because you've put perhaps an oil on and then a water-based one and then an oil-based one. And, and they don't like that layering. And traditionally, I remember the lovely man from Medicaid, because I said, how do you know what to layer? And he said to me, Trini, think of the lightest formula to the heaviest formula. It's a very easy way to think about it. So the lightest formula after cleansing would be an essence, an acid toner, a serum. Okay, if it's not an oil, I'm talking about a serum that's not an oil, um, an SPF. Um, and then you could put an oil. I'd put an oil on before my SPF though. But if you were to put a facial oil on and then trying to put on a serum which didn't contain oil, I think that's when things get a bit tricky. I need to put on some woody fig. I'm feeling a nice, I need a nice smell. To, oh no, I can put on. I want to try something again. I want to try something that I cannot talk about, but I'm going to try it anyway. And it's really strong. And I don't know if I love it beyond or if it irritates me, but I'm just going to sit with it. I need to sit with it. So after that thing of having my exfoliating acid, I could put on a very basic, I'm going to, actually, I'm going to put on today something I haven't used for ages, which I found again in France. And it, sometimes when I put it on in my routine, it pills. And I want to check because they, I thought changed the formula, but it's just nukes creme fraiche and um they had this in a body lotion and they now say it's 48 hours of hydration now that seems a bit impossible because what happens if you wash your face but as a serum i find it gives that nice level of hydration so we're going to have a little go and see if it is what i remember it's a nice little consistency the smell has slightly changed the only worrying thing i have is that I have a door downstairs for my products. And the other day I came in, it was really hot and my door was open and I didn't know how hot everything got. And it, it was like that day when it was like 70 degrees. And I'm thinking, is the smell what the smell used to be? Or is this a smell from something literally boiling in my cupboard? I don't know. But what is nice when this hasn't been boiling in the sun is that it's sort of, to me, like a serum slash moisturiser because I don't need, after this, to do anything other than my BFF. Don't forget the neck. Do you notice my neck? Oh, you notice my neck. I've got a story to tell you in the next few days about something I've done. But I'm feeling my neck is much better. Hardest thing to deal with your neck, I tell you. The questions I'm most asked about are, how can I deal with marionette mouth and how can I deal with my neck? Um, and when we think of all the things that we do every single day, um, if I think of what are the most important things that you could do for your skin, all right? Let me try and, let me try and summarize that without going on forever. Wear sunscreen as early as possible in your life journey. So if you wear it in your teens, unbelievable, because that's when most of the damage is done. And it might seem that, you know, Lila is now in Turkey saying, oh, mummy, look at my tan. And I'm going, Lila, are you wearing 30 on your body? Please tell me you are. And she says, yes, I am. And I said, are you wearing 50 on your face? She goes, yes, I am. Now, I don't know how often she reapplies, but all that damage is done then. And then it sits right under between the epidermis and the dermis. And it, over the years, it comes out. So when you are 50 and you reach a perimenopausal stage and you've had really bad damage when you were a kid, your parents didn't put SPF on you and stuff, your, what's happening underneath, and Juliana Hunter and I did a talk on this about um, sunspots and melanin uh, and uh, uh, you know, melasma. They sort of amalgamate and they meet each other under the dermis. And then any small thing quickly in the sun pops them out and that's how suddenly, as you have no hormonal protection around your skin, your, your estrogen levels have gone way down, those age spots suddenly go pop, 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 like this, that's what happens. So if you're watching this and you're 20, know that's what will happen and think about sunscreen. I'd just like to say that. Um, so that's one big thing I would kind of give looking back. The other thing is 
because of my lying, this is how I used to be in the sun, right? I'd lie like this, and I used to have this little thing around me here, like it was a reflector, no sunblock, so that I get extra reflection because my neck was so long and I felt, I want to get my neck brown. And as a result, the skin on my neck got very affected. So I'd always been a bit like, what can I do for my neck? What can I do for my neck? And I do do lots of creams every single day for my face. I do my retinols, I do my skincare treatments, and those are key to do. A daily routine, you know, whether you have a facelift. I've, I've known women who've had a facelift and have no daily routine, and my skin is way better than theirs. Okay, and I know it is because there hasn't been that consistent daily nurturing and maintenance. It takes five minutes of your time. But they just like thought, well, I've had the facelift. I don't, I don't need anything else. And you do. You need to look after the texture of your skin. You need to protect your skin. So there are then those in-between tools, which I love. There's ex facial exercises, which I love. A-E-I-O-U-A. It's key. It's key if I look at the you know, women in my life who are no longer with us, who really did facial exercising, you see the upholstery, the scaffolding they put in to give their muscles a tightening so they never lapse too much. But I didn't do AIOU properly until, you know, 10 years ago, because I was like, and this kind of in front of the computer stuff is the worst thing for our next. The other thing a lot of people complain about is that marionette mouth and a lot of, you know, there's a very classic thing in skincare, which is if you look at, if you have a, a, a daughter in your family, usually you kind of, life is like this, the, the gravity level, they always show this triangle, gravity, cheekbones are high, brows are high, and then you get older and you go, gravity. So you get that kind of marionette mouth, you get jowls, things like that, which we all go, ooh. And there are things you can do, and I have been guinea pigging for you some things you can do, which I guinea pigged at the beginning of last week, so I will put a film out soon to show you that, because I feel it was gruesome, fascinating, and some of you I know will want to do it. Others will think, well, I can't afford to do it, and others will think I'll save to do it, and others will think I don't need it. But it was interesting, and I just, I quite like being a guinea pig for you guys on certain things that I know really, you know, on a superficial level, bug us quite a lot. Um, as I have another coffee and probably a cigarette. Yeah. We're not all perfect. Um, have you now written down? I'd really like to know if you've been writing down for me about what you picked up from your mum because it's really interesting for me to know. The sale is still... So the sale stopped at 8 a.m. this morning. I'm really, really, really sorry. But go on to Stacks on Trinity London and then if you buy them in the Stacks, you can kind of save yourself about 5%. Um... So it is worth doing it. Hello, watching from Japan. Hello, where they have the most incredible skincare routines. I remember going around, not called, what was it called? Osokonoa. There's a big department store. Tokyo Hands. Oh, Tokyo Hands. If you ever, ever, ever get to Tokyo, not a huge amount of us do in our lives, but I, I had the pleasure of taking Lila there two years ago. And there's this department store called Tokyo Hands. And they have a floor of appliances, like, you know, my kind of mad appliances, like this kind of stuff. They have a floor of it, and you're like, I want to try everything. Um, these things, by the way, all these things I do, daily maintenance, that's what I put into my daily maintenance regime, I do think help with the consistency of skin very much. Okay, all right, uh, you just bought the top I had on in the taxi the other day. How nice is that top? I mean, loved that top. I think you mean the orange top. You want me to go onto my wardrobe in a second. I will pick up the phone and show you. Darling, I'm sorry, Rene, we don't have your, the products in um, the Philippines, but we ship worldwide. Um, Susie, recommendations of retinols. Go on to Fabulous 4 or Secret 7 on the blog, and I give tons of recommendations, all different price points and strengths. So have a look. Um, and June Ashraf, my 15-year-old daughter has a bit of acne and redness. Which cleanser, toner, or moisturizer, please? I think at 15, it's a really good time for a kid, I'm so sorry, for a kid to get into a skincare routine. So, the three ranges I like, 
for boys, there's one called 31st State, which this woman started because her two teenage sons had acne. It's lovely. It has cleansing pads at night and cleanser in the morning. Just gets them in a routine. Another one is Dermalogica's Clean Star, which Lila has in her bathroom, which I really like. It's formulated at four spots and it's very unisex in terms can i still use that word but it's very much like if you give it to a teenage boy or a teenage girl they're not going to get oh um and then um allies of skin started out a range called pha which is sort of like the children of allies of skin and it's about half the price and they've done this whole clever little regime i don't have any of the products with me because lila stole them all finally i took lila to see Teresa tame at um her clinic about six months ago and she did a whole extraction thing and then she literally said to Lila just to use Neostarters AHA BHA gel cleanser and that's it an occasional moisturizer so I gave her Dr Sam Bunting's flawless cleanser I think less is better they shouldn't be routining with 20 products um keeping it clean I think investing in good skincare is important I'm sure there are really good alternatives I know that Neutrogena in America in America only not in England have some very good product like the blackhead cleanser etc what i would say is to avoid like the plague is any kind of strip thing so whenever i see i come in i come into the tv room and lila knows i hate this and she'll have one of those poor strips on i go what are you doing because it just destroys skin it's like it's saying it's pulling out the blackhead but like do you want to do it that aggressively and uh, what else is it taking out and how's your lovely ph mantle of your skin and your whatever the microderm bioderm but no 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 you had lashes taken off and now I'm using your routine. It's great. Sue, I'm really happy to recommend it. If any of you want to know about the lash routine, I did a film on Facebook and Instagram. Trini, does a hyaluronic acid go on before or after medicates retinoate at night? Hyaluronic acid will go on after, but I don't use hyaluronic acid as a treatment after retinol. Some people like that as a treatment, but hyaluronic acid then, to me, should not be the last thing that goes on. You need something on top of it to then hold in that moisture so i believe it's a kind of daytime thing so i'd be inclined to say you use a hyaluronic acid and then you put a moisturizer on top um yes i would say that otherwise it's not going to have the right effect um good morning thanks so much for the sale i managed my first stack wonderful rebecca so lovely to hear it and you've treated yourself to the five minute maker fantastic I would love to visit Zara in Cape Town. Um, Diana knows I've been there because I have a jacket. I always remind myself came from that um, Zara store in the Victorian Albert Docks in Cape Town. Um, oh, beautiful place. Uh, Jacqueline donated to Beauty Backed and signed the petition. Jacqueline, fantastic. We were speaking at the very beginning of the show about um, a marvellous... Um, it's been going a while, actually, beautybacked.com, but this is an initiative to help beauticians and their families who have found themselves really struggling because of this yo-yoing of the bloody government to decide if they can be open or closed and they generally are the sole breadwinners in their family and it's to give support and it's a very clever committee who decide who gets the support in a very fair way so I think it's quite really good. What are the three products I should start with in your brand? Helena this is what I'm asked probably more than any other question and I would say it depends entirely on your age on what you'll like on how much coverage you like but my favorite three products in the range oh can i say this my three most transforming products in the range would be bff skin perfector which is our spf 30. i'm going to actually put it on now um and what this does is it turns into the color of your skin it comes in a number of shades it gives you spf 30 protection um it starts off white and it transforms um and you get an even skin tone you get life to back to your skin every single time that you use it. It's brilliant, smell is lovely. And just like we sell one, well yesterday we sold one every 10 seconds I think, but generally we sell one every 30 or 40 seconds. Then a lot of people love Miracle Blur because it diffuses um, lines everywhere around your face that you might have them. But um, otherwise it's to get just one, you know, a lip and cheek, which can actually sort of be your go-to. And if you do match to me on the side, you'll then be told which your best one. So just for purposes now, I'm gonna use Rossi, which is our red one, and I'm just gonna tap it on. And what's lovely about this, because it's matte, well not matte, it's just not shiny. I wear it under my mask all day when I go out and I still have color on my lips and it's not getting caught on the mask. And then I put it onto my cheeks like that to 
give myself a little bit of blush. And that really, because the BFF comes with a little empty teapot, so you can put that and start building a stack. So you get a little empty one of these, and you can put the pump in um, to your um, teapot. So I do that, and then I might just do a lip glow. And I, I mean, I might not in that first thing do the eyes, but I might do the eyes. I probably would do the eyes. Um, if I had a colour, let's say I had chosen instead, well, I'd do it with Rossi, because I would actually do it with Rossi. I'd even just do a tiny bit of colour there. I mean, the lip and cheek probably should have been called if we'd renamed the lip, cheek and eye. It's such an easy peasy thing. I'm going to put on a lip glow now. Just, I can't tell you the colour because it's not out yet. Just over Rossi there. And then what I like to do with the lip glow is to just put it over my blusher to bump it up. So that was three products. And that is what I'd start with, because that's the most transformative way. And then you go around and you have a stack, which would be... It would be that big, but without the mirror. So it would be that, which would be like containing your BFF, lip cheek, lip glare. That's your makeup. It's like I transformed my face in two seconds. And then you could always get the mirror on top, which is very convenient. OK, I know Hannah is snuffling in the background because she's just about to say to me, Trini! You're over time. Would that be right, Hannah? Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, Hannah. Because even before Hannah starts to speak, I just hear that rustling. I hear that rustling, honey. So I'm really sorry I can't answer more questions. Um, I'm going to, what can I show you? Because I did say I would do something to do with um, wardrobe. Um, so let me just see. I, I do hope you've had a chance. If you're watching this later, could you please tell me about your skincare routines and how you pick them up and, and what's in your skincare routine? I'd love to know right now what is in your skincare routine, you know, um, because then I can understand of, of when I'm thinking of what categories of products talk to you about, who wants to know the most um, about what, you know, it's like that. We can chat about the same thing every week because there's new people every week and I love that. But I love also going off on the tangent. I love the fact we went on to... Um, to uh, fragrance last week. I love that conversation. Um, so I just give you a quick little tour of what I did last night. One second, get that off. Oh. Um, and switch the phone around. I can't show you. There's a few things I can't show you in this room. Okay, so here, this is what I did. Now, um, I'm thinking of doing for a closet confessions next a metallics story because I think metallics is something I don't mention often in life so I'm doing the metallics and preparing closet confessions from the kind of cool metallics I wore that top on this morning yesterday from um Scott Sax Potter to the warm ones and it includes a 30 year old coat from Prada and it includes a dress from Zara then I'm looking at blush but I don't have much blush and there was sort of requests for blush this is a new little Zara purchase and I love that it's just elegant. It was, I think, 39 quid. I think the sleeve is divine. I think it looks much more expensive than what it is. So I think that's kind of cool. Um, that Those are not new. Then over here, I usually have kind of... Let me... Sorry, I'm just going to clean that. I usually have a mixture of sort of what I'm wearing and what outfits I'm thinking of wearing. So I don't know how many of you remember that lovely navy silky skirt from Zara. Do you remember that one, which I put over something? And I saw on the site, they have it in a lovely steel blue. So I'm gonna mix that with this little top I found from Zara. See what that looks like. Um, this is something that I've got, I haven't decided if I was keeping it yet, but I think I will. The Adela blouse, 29 pounds, but so, I mean, that's like a me and M shirt. Look how pretty that is from Zara. I think it's fab. So. I will keep that and I'll probably wear it with this there, which is this skirt, white skirt. It looks a bit boxy, but on it's divine. I did a little outfit of the day on it. You can see it later. Um, then here, you, lots of you saw the me and M trouser suit I did with Chloe Friday Twinning, but I went and bought the dress that goes underneath it and it's such lovely length. I just got this from Zara. I don't know whether I'll keep it now. It's £79, pounds, which I thought was such a lot. And it's the kind of thing that I would have bought for a summer holiday, you know, because it's just, it's that thing we want to be buying on the beach and I won't be going away. So I was thinking, how could I, if I did buy it now, how would I wear it now um, to make it feel it was London? So I'm going to try styling it up with trousers and a fun white top and just see if it works. And I'll, I'll share that with you guys. This is far more relaxing, by the way, than going into Zara. 
Um, I did get that skirt. I don't have many of you follow my stories from uh, my uh, Outnet shop up, which is all the different yellows. In the end, it was £110. Or in fact, I got it. You know, I got it from Harvey Nichols in the right size. What I did, though, is it had a slit. I don't like slits in things, and I sewed up the slit. There was a slit there, and I didn't. I got a Susanna to sew it up. I didn't sew it up. Um, and then, oh, this. This is just, I can't wait to style this up. You're going to love it or hate it, all right? But I, I just love it so much. And it's what I um, talked about on this morning. Um, as a lady that she should do this and it's a paisley trouser suit which you might think to yourself oh my god I've been living in paisley pajamas for three months why would I want a paisley trouser suit but the colors of this maybe it's it's more that I would like a I'd love a sort of sofa covered in this but there's so many pretty colors in this and I just thought it has a merit it can be worn as separate and together so I'm going to sort of start that up and show you all the different ways I think I'd wear it um, and then I did get, you might notice in my, in my coats section of my wardrobe, there is a new friend and I did actually buy that coat from Selfridges. And I bought it because I lived in this one from, um, uh, this is kind of a weird way to talk about things, but I lived in this one from um, River Island, but it's really bally and it was like a 49 pound coat and it was very, it's going to look tired incredibly quickly. And I thought I've made so many outfits that work with that coat now. Um, do I invest in that quality piece, which was the most expensive thing I bought all year? So I did. So I, I really tidied up. Look, I'm really feeling tidy, and um, and I had great fun doing it. So that was my that was my two a.m. That was my two a.m. to three a.m. moment uh, yesterday. So um, and, um, we'll catch up soon. Thank you so much for watching.